Welcome to Probably Nothing, the IOTA and Shimmer news of the last few days. I'm Alexander, here we go. First up is Build 5, which welcomes a new member to its advisory board. Guido Greber, as an expert in digital transformation and cloud technologies, will support the platform in its optimization and global expansion. The goal is to become an open standard for platform operation and interoperability across companies. Marianne de la Roche also joins the advisory board. She will work on international regulatory issues, sustainability and social impact. Build 5 has also released one of three updates. One of these is confidential computing, which improves data security in public cloud environments. This technology allows sensitive data to be processed in protected enclaves that remain invisible and unrecognizable to unauthorized parties. Build 5 uses this technology to enable secure transactions and integrate data protection into its network. This promises a sustainable, secure and economical solution for businesses. The second article was published on the 19th of July and deals with edge computing. Edge computing is a technology that brings data processing closer to the source and enable real-time decision making. Together. With confidential computing, it protects sensitive data in edge networks. Integration with Red Hat OpenShift ensures business logic runs securely on edge devices without compromising the benefits of IOTA Ledger technology. The result is secure and trusted execution across the edge. The market for edge computing is expected to grow strongly. On the 20th of July, there was an insight into a use case of the OTR on Tangle request. Ontangle requests are an essential part of the Build 5 platform. They create a unified layer of communication across the Tangle and enable secure, decentralized and traceable communication across the IOTA network. OTRs can make a trigger anonymous requests to central services, including smart contracts. Protocol level processing costs are zero, while small fees may be incurred for Build 5 platform services. OTRs have been successfully tested on the IOTA Shimmer network and have proven to be a proven technology. The Build 5 platform plans to gradually migrate all functions to OTRs to enable seamless integration with Web3 technology. OTRs provide a simple bridge from Web2 to Web3 and will play a crucial role in the overall platform in the future. The goal is to make everything accessible through a simple interface with Tangle. In the future, Mana Station will also play an important role in fueling IOTA Level 1 smart contracts. Matt Yaga has launched a new old project, the project Demia, splits from Digital MRV and works with the IOTA Foundation and Climate Check to create a global data community for environmental data. Demia will drive the innovative IOTA streams with important improvements and is looking for dedicated Demian heroes who want to support the project. Anyone who would like to join should get in touch. The IOTA Foundation has decided to stop developing the mobile version of its wallet Firefly and instead focus on maintaining the wallet libraries so that external companies can build their wallet implementations on top of it. However, the desktop version of Firefly will continue to be maintained by the IOTA Foundation. Users are encouraged to either use the desktop version of Firefly and import their data or use a trusted third-party wallet. This news come as no surprise, as the IOTA Foundation already announced last year that it was splitting off. There was a lot of resentment about in the community. Alternatives include the TanglePay wallet and the Bifrost wallet on Telegram. Deeper Finance has created a Medium article. There is nothing new in it. It is just mentioned how great the platform is and what we can expect in the future. What is new in the partnership with Pyt? The integration of Pyt's real-time data guarantees an accurate and reliable evolution of deposited assets, ensuring transparent and secure transactions. Further collaborations with industry leaders will further enhance the DeFi infrastructure. Let's move on to the latest assembly numbers in the 6 of 8 rounds. 690 million assembly have been distributed. In total, there are still 22 days left in this round. 
the great delineator Alfred, in which IOTA is integrated, was presented to the Minister of Transport in Berlin. I doubt whether the word IOTA was mentioned, so as not to confuse the transport minister too much. Blackpin wins another prize, but the voices from the community are getting louder about whether IOTA is still been using. So far, I haven't found a new answer to this question. What do you guys think? Is Blackpin still using the technology or was it? Write it in the comments. The IOTA Foundation is doing good lobbying when it comes to blockchain and Europe. The Data Act, which came to Parliament a month ago, was met with negativity from the whole industry and petitions and organizations formed with counter-proposals. As a result, some amendments were made. The new statement shows that the initiators are satisfied and much has been taken into account. Two episodes ago I mentioned the Blockchain 23 in Portugal. That was the first workshop for DLTs. Now the IOTA Foundation has shown some impressions. Also the paper Managing Right Access Without Token Fees in Leaderless DAG Based Ledgers won the Best Paper Award co-authored by Andrew Cullen from the IOTA Foundation. Regulation is important, so there was also a report from the EU blockchain forums DeFi Horizons. The new report is a response to the ACPR consultation to better regulate DeFi, a new paper on improving quality of services for users of leaderless DAG-based distributed ledgers was also published. The user-friendliness of distributed ledgers is crucial to their adoption. This paper proposes a mechanism for interaction between users and nodes in leaderless DAG-based ledgers such as IOTA. The mechanism allows users to select nodes based on the quality of services to minimize the risk of poor quality of service. Simulations results are presented to demonstrate the effectiveness of the proposed policies. Finally, a political.co gave a summary of the report bridging the gap between technology and regulation with dialogue. Kovai gave a talk at the National University of Singapore to more than 100 participants, among other things, about how great IOTA and Shima are. The whole thing was even published on YouTube, the video lasts one hour. You can find the link in the description as always. MosquitoPay tweets that their first product is about to be released. 62 community members want to try the alpha. Congratulations on this first major milestone. On the 20th of July, Nakama Labs announced some big news. Virtue, the over-collateralized stablecoin lending platform on Shimmer with 0% interest. As a DeFi platform with over-collateralized stablecoins, it minimizes the risks of cryptocurrency's volatility. Virtue is a modified version of liquidity and allows a wide range of assets to collateralize loans. The platform has two tokens, YUSD as a stablecoin and Virtue as a utility token. Virtue holders can use their tokens to earn fees for loan origination and VUSD repayments. Virtue offers several benefits including 0% interest, stability through over collateralization and a stability pool to liquidate risky positions and multi-collateral assets. The platform is decentralized and has safety as a core value. Virtue will be launching on Shimmer EVM soon. The Tangle Gang has posed a good question to the governance community. When will the 50T go live? Philo gave the following answer. As soon as the EVM is up and running on IOTA. Tangle Pay has released a new update, 156. There are no new features, just preparation for the Shimmer EVM. BeFirst Wallet has also replaced an update, 120. The big new features is a GPT-4 wizard. There are also rankings and automatic winning of prizes when you complete tasks. Hans Moog has published a promising update on Twitter. The text describes the decision to stop working on the IOTA core prototype and instead rewrite all components from scratch. The difficulties in debugging the prototype are explained, including complex logic lack of isolation, difficulties in multi-threading implementation and difficulties in specifying and explaining the algorithm. Hence mentions the idea of moving the logic into the block to reduce complexity. In the last two months, work has been done on a new software framework that provides a better way to express data structures and logic. 
the new method seems to solve the above problems is compatible with existing code. The more technical explanations is promised in a separate post. Now to the updates around IOTA and Shimmer. First up, the IOTA SDK was released in version 1.0, which has progressed well for the big IOTA update Stardust and 2.0. Some updates have also been added for Wasp, version 0.7.0 Alpha 9, the Firefly Shimmer Wallet has been updated to version 2.1.4, there are interesting new features here that prepare and extend the Shimmer EVM, the Firefly Wallet for IOTA was also released in version 1.0.1, however this is only about staking. The Parameter Task Force worked on network simulations to control congestion. With the right settings, congestion could be controlled well, but some blocks of non-spammers might be orphaned. Ideas for mana markets and spam protection for progress was also made on mana TIPs and rewards, and work continued on documentation and random number generation. This is it for this episode. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>